Hey, it's John at Tinderbox Arts. While I'm doing some other work on this BMW R1200 RT, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to talk about ignition coils and how to test them. Now these bikes have four ignition coils along with four spark plugs. So to remove these from the engine, there's one here and there's one underneath, you have to be a little bit cautious. Now to remove these coils from the cylinder head, uh, there is a special tool that is made looks like this and you can buy it in several different places without this tool it may be possible to get these coils out but it'll be a little bit of a struggle and you have a good chance of screwing up the top here the way the tool works it has this recessed area right here that slips over the coil and then once that's snapped in place this little handle here can be used to kind of wiggle the coil out carefully and without this tool it, it really is a struggle so I suggest getting this this little plastic tab on the top here needs to be pulled up in order to disconnect uh, from the bike harness and that can break off pretty easily too so be cautious about that and then finally the pins inside are very fragile so it, when we're going to be doing some testing here and even when you're pulling this off of the harness, you just got to be cautious that you don't bend those pins because once you do, there's no going back. Now, as far as I'm concerned, if you're testing the coils, you also need to test the wiring leading up to the coils. So two things you want to look for here, when you disconnect the harness from the coil, you want to see if there's any dirt or corrosion inside where the pins should be meeting this harness and you want to make sure that the wires uh, leading up to this connector are not pinched or broken or any kind of problems like that. So do a very thorough visual inspection first. Now there are some shade tree mechanic ways of testing these. One of which is to pull all the spark plugs, or at least uh, two of them anyway, and pull the coils and with one spark plug mounted in the coil, you can test to see if there's any spark at all. You can have a helper get on the starting button. If you hold this electrode to a ground, say this bolt right here, and then have a helper try to start the bike just for a few seconds, you want to visually see a blue spark jumping you know, to the electrode there. And if you do, then you know you have some spark anyway. If you only see a very faint yellow spark, that could be a problem. Or if you don't see any spark at all, that could be a problem. So one shade tree way of testing a coil uh, is just to make sure you have some kind of spark. Now the other shade tree method is to swap coils. So you have four different coils, uh, two look like this, two look like this. So you could swap one for another that fit and just see if a symptom changes. So if you have a miss on one cylinder and you swap the coil uh, to an opposite cylinder and suddenly the problem switches cylinders, well you know maybe the coil could be the issue. So those are two shade tree mechanic ways of trying to test these coils. All right, what about more specific tests? Can we use a multimeter uh, on the ohm setting or resistance setting in order to test these more specifically? Ordinarily, the answer is yes. Now, many manufacturers will publish specifications for their coils, and you can compare on the primary side of the coil and the secondary side of the coil uh, the manufacturer's specifications to readings that you get in the field, and that's great. In this case, BMW does not publish specifications, so we're left to guess. Now, can we do anything with this uh, information if we do get some readings? Well, yeah. For one thing, we have four of these, like I said, and we can compare, you know, one to another. So if we take four different readings and we get, you know, one that stands out that's especially different from all the others, then that is a clue that maybe there's something going on with that coil. So that's good. Uh, one downside though is that from what I've done on my own testing, it looks like you can only test the primary side of these coils and not the secondary side. So ordinarily, we would want to see on the primary side a reading of say between 0.8, maybe as low as 0.5 even, to 1.2 ohm. So something in that range would be a typical coil. And on the secondary side, you know, a very common reading would be in the kilo ohm range, say between 11 and 12 kilo ohms, something in that range. However, uh, when I've done some testing on these, I realized the primary side, I do get typical or normal readings. On the secondary side, it's really not measurable. Uh, you get wacky readings that don't make, 
make any sense, like on the mega ohm scale. So it doesn't make any sense. I think the reason for that may be that there is a circuit in here. Maybe there's a very crude circuit with a transistor in it, and it's just preventing the measurement of the secondary side. So what I'm going to tell you is I think we can measure the primary side, which I'll do here shortly, but I don't think the secondary side can be measured. With that said, I'm going to tell you how to measure the primary side. So there's three pins in here. It's the two outside pins that we want to attach our leads from our meter. And in order to do that, you could try to, you know, manually put your leads in there. It's a very tight fit and you do run the risk of bending those pins, like I said earlier. So rather than take that risk, I suggest you use alligator clips like this that you can kind of sneak in there and just clip on each of those outside pins. So that's exactly what I've done here. The piece of paper is just an insulator. Because these alligator clips are so close, I needed something to separate them so they didn't touch and ruin my measurement. So I just stuck a piece of paper in there. If you have smaller alligator clips, it may not be an issue. So I've set up the two outside pins on this coil and we'll see what we get for a measurement. So I'm gonna connect my meter here, one on one side, and then watch my meter and we're coming up with one ohm. So that is definitely within a range that I would normally see. Now I have my leads switched to this other coil. This is the secondary coil on the same side. Now let's test this one. Again, we're coming up with one ohm. And anything in that range, if it was 1.1, 1.2, uh, I would say that that is a normal reading that you would want to see. Okay, we'll try one more for the heck of it. This is the third one. And now I'm getting 1 1.2 ohm, 1.1 1 .1 ohm. So again, right within the range that I would expect to see. So if you're getting anything in that range, I'd say you're in good shape on the primary side. So that's really all you can do. You have your two shade tree tricks you can try. Uh, if you have a meter, you can test the primary side. You cannot test the secondary side, at least based on my uh, results. Uh, and then you can compare your results among the four different uh, coils. If you get one that's way out of line with the others, that's definitely something that you should look at in more depth.